So we are going to create this curve based rock. So let's get right into Blender, add a new Bezier curve. Let's delete the default one and draw our own shape. So I draw something like this. And let's go straight into geometry nodes. Uh, the important thing is that the curve is away from its origin point because the distance to the origin point will determine it will determine the radius. So let's add a new geometry node setup. And the first thing we're going to do is resample the curve. I'm going to use length. And yeah, so we have these segments, which are going to be the rock layers. Then we're going to curve to mesh and we're going to split the edges. And then we're going to add a scale elements elements we want to scale are the edges. Now we overlap these edges like this. We want to convert these back to a curve. So mesh the curve and let's use a set position node. So we basically want to scale them all, all towards a single line in the center. So we want to use a position. So we want to reset them all to the original position. So use a position node with a vector math and we're going to multiply it with a vector math and put it into the position. And now we want only the set location and reset X and Y to zero. And now we basically moved all of these points of the curve back to zero. We did this because now we want to convert the spec to a mesh again. So curve to mesh and we're going to use a circle, curve circle as a profile. And let's use a resolution of six. We want to, we want to fill the caps. So now we want each of these segments have basically the shape. So the radius of the shape from before here. So before we move all of the points to the zero, zero location, we can capture the position of each spline. So let's capture the position like this. So we have all of these values of their location stored onto them. So let's use a separate XYZ and use uh, the X values. So you can see, yeah, these basically just show us the distance from the center. And now we can use this X value for the scale. Now we have, yeah, this effect right here. So now it's time to distort the mesh to look a little bit more like rock. So let's add in a triangulate and a dual mesh. So triangulate just converts all of the faces from square to triangles to get a little bit more randomization and dual mesh does that to the mesh. I don't know how to describe it. Now we can add a subdivide mesh before the triangulate to, yeah, the more subdivisions you have, the more it's going to keep its original shape. You can choose whatever value you like. We can also also randomize the triangulation by duplicating it and using a different method, like shortest diagonal and fix an alternative and then use a random value for the selection of the first one, like this. Um, Let's use fixed and fixed alternative. So it kind of selects randomly between the two different uh, triangulization methods. So you basically have a little bit of a random seed here. So now we want to distort this a little bit. Let's use a set position node. Let's use a noise texture. And yeah use the color of the noise texture as the offset. Now this offsets it into positive numbers. So let's subtract 0.5. This will keep it in the center and use a scale to 
have a simple control for the strength of the effect. You can also add a subdivision, subdivide mesh before the noise distortion. Let's use these values. Uh, now we want to convert this to a volume. Let's use a mesh to volume node and a volume to mesh. And I want to use a density of 10 and an interior bandwidth of 0.5. Or let's use, yeah, maybe, maybe five. So yeah, we can play around with the amount of like the resample curve, uh, resample length at the beginning to get different looks. And the subdivision. What we could also do is randomize the radius of the curve a bit. So add some numbers to the x value and use a random value node. And add maximally 0.5 and subtract maximally 0 0.0 minus 0.1. And yeah, I'm gonna remove the subdivision like this. And also we can change how much they intersect with each other with the scale elements from the beginning. Yeah, this looks, that looks fine. And let's use a set position, another set position node again. And yeah, add another noise distortion after the remeshing to get more of a rock look. Do something like this. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go up to 184 for the voxel amount to get more mesh to work on. Now we can increase the detail of the noise. So then we're going to use another displacement, another noise texture, but this time we want some sort of stratification lines. So we want just vertical lines on the mesh. So we can, let's turn off the attribute text because that slows things down. So now we can work fluidly again. And let's use a position for the vector of the noise texture. So we can modify it with a vector math node. So let's use a vector multiply and multiply it on the z-axis so we get all of these stratification lines that we can use to displace it this, this is way too strong so let's use 0 0.05 and also we want the displacement only on the x and y axis not in the side there. You could also add a set shade smooth to the rock. And yeah, this is basically how we create the geometry of our procedural rock. You can change the yeah the curves of it. Uh, yeah, what I would also do is just duplicate the group input, the original mesh, and join it back together at the end here. So we can actually see what our curve looks like. As you can see, everything adapts automatically. But yeah, let's go to the shading. So let's create a new material. By default, if you create a new mesh with geometry nodes, the default material doesn't apply automatically. So we have to use a set material and drop it in here and choose the material we created. Let's name this proceed rock. Uh, now this actually affects things. Let's go into, let's choose a HDR for lighting and I'm gonna turn on transparency and also viewport denoise. Now let's go to the shader editor. Uh, let's set up a PBR rock texture. I would just grab one from CCO textures or texture heaven or something. If you have the node wrangler add-on enabled you can click SRG shift and T to automatically set up texture. I'm going to use this rock texture right here. So I'm gonna copy the location, paste it in Blender, select all textures and yeah, set this up. Let's use object coordinates. 
and change all of them. You can select all of the nodes and click Alt and everything that you do to one note while clicking alt or holding alt on your keyboard will apply to every other node so let's change all of them to box project i don't want to use the displacement node i want to use the displacement as a bump factor in the height let's increase the distance to 0.1 let's also set the blend to three yeah so now we can add some more detail or fake some more geometry detail with some bump notes. Like for example the stratification lines we can do something the same thing just with bump. So add a noise texture and scale them on the set axis to create these lines and just use this as a bump factor. So yeah, we can basically use this to fake in some more detail without being limited by the resolution of your mesh. We can add some cracks. So let's add a Voronoi texture. Set it to distance to edge and use a color ramp. Let's increase the contrast. So we have straight dark lines in here and use them as a height factor and let's distort this for noise texture with a noise texture to get more of a crack look so let's add a mix color node into the vector use linear light and use the noise texture Increase the detail. Now we can distort our Voronoi texture with noise. This basically looks like some cracks. Can increase the contrast here. And let's use a ambient occlusion node. And also use a color ramp. And let's switch dark and bright values. Because we want to have the crevices, the dark parts here selected. And let's use a skew saturation value node for our color and use our ambient occlusion as the factor and yeah, just darken it. You could also use your bump into the normal of the ambient occlusion, yeah, which will use all of the bump detail to factor in and treat it as it's like part of the mesh ambient occlusion. Yeah, you could also change the color of the rock with a by first converting it to gray values with a match map range node or a color ramp. You can use the minimum and maximum value to add in contrast if you want to change the brightness values. And then use a mix color node, set it to overlay, increase the factor all the way to one. And now you can use a custom color for this rock asset. You can go back to the geometry node setup and yeah, play around with all of the settings and see how it affects the shape of our rock. We can increase uh, the, the amount of the voxel amount or the overlap. Like if we set it to one, these are more separated. And if we go to 1.8, yeah, they intersect more all of the different layers. Can also change the length at the beginning to change how many layers the rock has. So yeah, these are some of the very basic techniques I used to create this uh, procedural rock for the nature generator.